right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of PDS Vision Webinar Wednesday. My name is Sevi Beaver, and today we're going to be talking about Creo Simulate Live. So first, I'm going to go over a brief agenda of what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to give a brief introduction to myself and to my company, PDS Vision. I'm then going to jump into talking about CSL or Creo Simulate Live. This is a tool that I am really excited to talk about. It's a simulation tool that fills a niche that none of the other PTC simulation offerings can fill. Um, and it's something that I think is, it's um, people are using it more and more but a lot of people still don't know it's out there. So um, I think the future is, is really, really bright for this tool. They're constantly adding new features every year. Um, so even if you are already doing simulations, in fact, especially if you're already doing simulations using other tools, um, this tool does some, some interesting things that you probably can't get done um, with the tool you're using. So on that topic, um, going through these points, I'm going to start out by talking about the value of CSL, why this um, piece of software is unique, where does CSL fit in the development process. Um, I'll talk about the specific capabilities and details of the software. And then I will talk a little bit about CSL compared to Creo Simulates. Um, common question I get, um, you know, two pieces of PTC software. Um, they have slightly different uses, but how do they actually compare in terms of results? Um, finally, I'll jump into Creo. I'll show CSL. I'll show a couple different environments, um, structural analysis, thermal analysis, and fluid flow. So you all can get an idea of how each of those environments looks and feels when you're working in Creo. And finally, I will open it up to a Q&A. Now, um, we're going to be using GoToMeeting for this webinar per usual. Um, that means that in your GoToWebinar um, menu, you should have an option or a, an area where you can submit questions. Um, there's also a chat pane. Feel free to use either of those. Um, I will say that I'm, I'm still getting used to the new GoToWebinar interface. So previously, I was really good at being able to see, you know, mid-presentation when people submitted a chat or a question. Um, I will try and continue to check that as I go. Um, but at the very least, we will get to all of that at the Q&A at the end. So just a brief introduction to myself. My name is Sevi. I have been with PDS Vision for about five years. Um, I've been on simulation here at PDS Vision for maybe about three and a half years. So you've, um, if you've tuned into these webinars before, you've probably seen me um, talking about simulation or something else. Um, other areas that I'm in include systems engineering, um, especially recently since about November, I've um, gotten pretty deep into CodeBeamer, um, another new exciting PTC tool. Um, simulation, of course, so CSL, Creo Ansys, Creo Simulate. Um, and then some other miscellaneous topics in Creo, like detailing, advanced assembly, piping, cabling. Um, experience that's relevant to this particular topic. Before I was with PDS Vision, I was from a mechanical engineering background. I worked in the en energy industry, and I got some experience running simulations for a liquid gas separator and making design changes um, based on those results. Um, I'm located in Cleveland, Ohio, but I am moving to St. Louis, Missouri at the end of next month. My company, PDS Vision, you um, probably know us as a PTC partner. We are actually the largest global PTC partner. Um, as you can see from this map, we have offices all over the world. This is actually a little bit outdated. I know at the very least we have a Spanish uh, office now in Spain. There's probably a few others that are not up here as well. Um, the last few years have been very exciting in terms of um, expansion into a, um, a, a truly awesome global PTC partner. Um, we mostly support PTC products, but specifically we are an ANSYS partner as well. 
Um, the tool we're talking about today, Creo Simulate Live, this is based on ANSYS technology. Um, so PTC and ANSYS are partners with each other. Um, a lot of ANSYS's technology ends up in Creo, but um, us as a company, PDS Vision, we work with ANSYS as well directly. Um, so we're able to support your software needs in both of these areas. We also have some other pieces of software that we um, that we support, that we find fulfill a, a role that PTC products doesn't, you know, completely fill. So for example, Moldex 3D for mold design and simulation, um, we support that as well. Um, here's just some of our customers, not gonna say anything uh, too lengthy about this. And I do just wanna mention um, one thing that sets us apart at PDS Vision from other PTC partners is that most of our staff, about 65% globally of our staff are technical people uh, rather than sales or administrators or anything else. We, my direct team, I love working with them. We have knowledge in pretty much all different areas of Creo. You know, everybody has a great unique skill set, and I'm happy to apply some of that knowledge to uh, help you all. All right, so moving on to the topic for today, Creo Simulation Live. This is a tool that was added with Creo 5.0, um, so about six or so years ago. And as I mentioned, it's based on ANSYS technology. Um, there, there are other simulation tools in Creo, um, but C Creo Simulation Live really stands out um, as unique from the other, the other three or so main ones. And the reason for that is, in, in a word, speed. ANSYS developed a new technology. I do not understand how it works whatsoever, but using that new technology, uh, meshing is completely automized. Um, in fact, I've heard meshless thrown around with Creo Simulation Live um, in terms of how it does the calculations and how it does the math. As I said, I don't exactly understand what's going on here, but, but fundamentally, the way that your model is meshed and the geometry is simulated in CSL is different than nearly every other simulation tool. Instead of using the CPU primarily, like Creo Simulate, like Creo Ansys. Creo Simulate Live is going to use the GPU. Uh, specifically, if you have an older PC, a PC without a graphics card at all, or a PC with an older graphics card, you might have trouble running Creo Simulate Live. Um, you can see at the bottom of the screen here, the Actual architecture has to be Kepler, Maxwell, Pascal, or newer. Um, what I would use as a metric is, is CUDA enabled. The graphics card needs to be CUDA, C-U-D-A enabled. Um, in general, uh, if you have a GTX or RTX or any of those newer NVIDIA cards, you are okay. You know, those are all fine. Um, my card, I think, is about four years old, and it's, you know, um, near top end, but not very top end, and I don't have any issues. Um, you also need at least four gigabytes of video RAM with eight preferred. So to summarize, there uh, was a big innovation in the meshing technology made by ANSYS. They used it to develop this new tool, which allows you to run simulations very, very, very quickly and it uses graphics cards uh, or GPUs to do that. So what kind of simulations can we run in CSL? We can run linear analyses. These can either be structural, thermal, modal, or flow. We have a uh, transient and steady state available for thermal and flow analysis. And as of Creo 11, in the advanced package, we have combined thermal and structural analysis. And as I mentioned, the focus is on speed, refinement, and interactivity. Um, 
we are going to be able to use Creo Simulation Live to quickly explore and find the optimal design. Um, and that's in contrast with other simulation tools, which often run uh, or often take a very long time to run. Um, so forgive this slide. I know that it's um, that it's the font is a little bit hard to read. Um, I took this actually from a customer case study, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about CSL and where it fits in the design process. I've been talking a whole lot about how this technology is fundamentally different from the other simulation tools. Um, so specifically, the other tools, Creo Simulate has been around forever. Um, you know, for decades, it's a tool that has a whole lot of functionality in Creo. Creo Ansys fulfills a similar role with newer technology. And Creo Flow Analysis covers, you know, flow, flow situations of all kinds. All three of those tools are going to use traditional meshing, and they are going to take a long time to run. Um, it's going to depend on your application, what you're simulating, but it's very common using these traditional tools that it's going to take a long time to run. So as a result, you'll do it closer to the end of the design process. Um, you, when it's still early in the design process, you have too many variables. You're not able to simulate all of your different iterations. So as a result, you'll, you'll delay that till the end of the process. You'll simulate a couple, uh, different cases to get some info. You'll make some final design changes and, and you'll be, you know, you'll be done from there. Creo Simulation Live works so quickly that ideally you use CSL much earlier in the process, as you can see here. So this is a case study for a Japanese company. They use um, Creo Simulation Live at the very beginning of their process. This is built, uh, this tool is built directly into Creo. As I've said, it loads very, very quickly, usually within five to 10 seconds, it'll have a complete simulation done. So in real time, you can make changes to your geometry and see how your results are going to change. Uh, from there, the company uses generative design along with behavioral modeling and CSL to explore alternative solutions and complete their, their geometry. And finally, they will go to these traditional simulation tools to refine, to validate, to make any last minute design changes. So using CSL allows you to incorporate simulation much earlier in the process because it works so quickly, make changes inspired by that info. As a result, you're going to cut down on your number of prototypes. You're going to cut down on your late stage design changes. And all of that is going to save you time and, and make a better product. So I want to talk briefly about licensing. Creo Simulation Live comes in two tiers. The first tier, um, I can just save you time looking at all the checkboxes, but you can you know, look closely if you'd like. The first tier covers everything except for fluids and combined structural thermal. You can see that very top check socks, combined structural and thermal simulation, and that bottom area, those are all fluid related. Uh, the advanced license is specifically for fluids and combined structural thermal. Now, I want to jump into a comparison of Creo Simulate Live and Creo Simulate. As I mentioned, these two tools are not necessarily competitors to each other. Ideally, and many companies follow this, this workflow, ideally the engineer would use Creo Simulate Live as they're designing the part, make changes as they go and very quickly get that feedback. And then you can use Creo Simulate as well later in the process to get slightly more accurate results, to verify your model, to incorporate any last minute changes with that new information. Um, but the question often comes up, how, much of a difference is there in accuracy between these two? We've talked about how fast Creo Simulation Live is, but that has to come at some sort of cost, right? So um, I, I prepared a couple what if scenarios. I did a modal simulation, a structural simulation, and a thermal simulation in both environments. 
and I'm going to share the results. So first was a modal analysis. Um, the difference between Creo Simulation Live and Creo Simulate was about 1.5%, um, which is pretty small. I think it's, you know, it's fair to say that's pretty small in terms of the grand scheme of things. Um, and the solution time took about three seconds to run rather than three minutes in one of these traditional tools. So we're getting our results about 60 times faster. The next example was a very large complex assembly uh, with a structural analysis. This assembly has a lot of small faces, small features. Um, so this is something I picked specifically as, as kind of a worst case scenario for CSL. This is a situation that CSL is, um, might make some sort of generalizations from the geometry we see here. Um, so I really wanted to push the limit of how how different you know the two tools could be with a, a slightly complex simulation and we'll see our percent differences are a little bit higher here so the max displacement was about six percent different between csl and creo simulate the stress was about 12 percent different between the two but you'll notice the time to run the solution it took 10 seconds in csl and it took three hours in Creo Simulate, which is, you know, 0.01% or something like that. Um, you know, really, really extremely faster than, than what you'll get in Simulate. Finally, I ran a thermal analysis in both CSL and Creo Simulate. And again, the results are about a one to 2% difference. And the solution time in CSL was again about 60 times faster. Um, just a note, steady state thermal analysis in CSL is very fast. So what conclusions can we come to? Um, I know there's a lot of text here. I'll leave it up for a second, but I'm just going to summarize. Um, essentially, Creo Simulate Live is generally very accurate. Um, the physics, as long as the physics of the problem are linear, so linear static, linear modal, linear thermal, CSL is not going to dif uh, be different from traditional simulation tools, um, at least by a significant amount. Now, in very large models, such as the engine, that have very small features, um, this can lead to larger differences between CSL and traditional tools. Um, these differences are still not huge. Again, in the worst case that I could come up with, it's about 12% off. Um, but at the same time, this doesn't really prevent us from using CSL how we would, would like to use CSL. So even if our final results are going to be, you know, 12% different in the possible worst case, I can still use this to compare my different options as I'm engineering the engine. So even if my final results are 12% higher or lower, I'm still going to be able to compare um, and ask what if questions in terms of my design, then I could bring in something like Creo Simulate at the very end to uh, make sure that I'm, that I'm meeting my design requirements. Um, the value here, as I've mentioned many times, is the real time results feedback completely inside of Creo. Um, I said here is enormous and will revolutionate, revolutionize the way simulation is used. So um, yeah, just to summarize, um, CSL is a new piece of technology, at least in the last maybe six or, or so years, at least in Creo, it runs extremely quickly. You can use it at early stages of the design process, make iterative changes and in real time, see how that'll affect your results. Um, a lot of people use this along with another simulation tool, but its results are generally very accurate um, in its own right. So I'm just going to briefly check questions. Um, I So question number one, can it do buckling analysis? It cannot do buckling analysis yet. Um, Leo, I see that you cannot see my screen. Can anybody else confirm that they can see my screen? 
Um, it says that it's sharing on my side. I just want to make sure that somebody can see my screen. Oh, there we go. Looks like looks like he restarted GoTo and now we're all good. Okay, perfect, perfect. So uh, getting back to questions. Um, can it do buckling analysis? No, unfortunately not. Um, this is something that you'll have to use a traditional tool for. Creo Simulate is, um, is the, the PTC solution for that, um, but no, no buckling yet. Um, question, does Creo Simulations have the capacity to analyze oil flow and pressure drop inside hydraulics manifolds? Um, so I'm going to say tentatively, yes. I don't, I don't know the specifics of your application. Um, you know, there are certain fluid flow features that CSL does not have. Um, you know, there are certain things it's not going to be able to do, specifically nonlinear operations uh, we cannot do in CSL. Um, so I, I, I can't tell you exactly without knowing the specifics, but I will say yes, you can, you know, in theory, you can do internal flow that could be oil flow, pressure drop inside hydraulics manifolds, uh, you know, so in theory, yes, but I'm not entirely sure your exact, you know, environment. So I can't tell you exactly that, you know, Creo, Creo can model everything perfectly, but, but yeah, you can do fluid flow, you can check pressure drop, yes. Um, is this integrated into wind chill? Um, so I am not the best person to answer that question. I, I use wind chill, um, but I'm not a wind chill administrator. I'm not somebody that understands the specifics. I do know, I can tell you that with CSL, everything is going to be stored in, in the CAD file. So um, there's not gonna be, even in Creo Simulate, you know, you're gonna generate some, some results files. Um, in, in CSL, everything is stored inside the part itself. Now, in terms of like viewing results, saving results to wind chill, that kind of stuff, I'm honestly not sure. Um, and I can check on that and get back to you. Um, but yeah, um, you know, the, the, the data, the simulation data is stored in the part, which is then stored in wind chill. So if you just mean, you know, managing the, the simulation itself, then, then yeah. Um, so I have another question that basically asking about contact analysis. So contact analysis, this is when you're, you're simulating assemblies, different parts of that assembly might be running into each other. Um, so this is inherently nonlinear. Um, does CSL do nonlinear um, if it has contact is the question. Um, so the answer is, I believe no. Um, so if I jump into Creo Simulate here, um, and I'll get to these models in, in a second, but if I open up contacts, um, my understanding of this contact analysis is that all of this is linear. So you can see we have the option for bonded for no separation, which is not quite the same as bonded and for free. Um, we don't have the option for contact with friction. Um, so we have some new options here. We can identify contacts. Creo can automatically, you know, find them, but we don't have that nonlinear, you know, friction contact in the traditional sets. Um, so no, this is still linear, unfortunately. Um, and based on how I understand it, that sort of contacts, there's there's not a good way to do that. Okay, so I'm going to jump into my demonstration here. Um, so we just have a Creo part file. And we can see that live simulation is incorporated directly into the ribbon. Um, so I'm just going to create a new simulation. You can see that we have four different options, structure, thermal, modal, and fluid. Um, I'm not going to show modal analysis today, but um, that's not for any particular reason other than to save time. 
Um, but modal analysis is going to handle vibrations if you, uh, if you don't know what that is. So I'm going to do a new structural analysis here. And um, constraints and loads, this is going to work, you know, the same as, as any other simulation tool. So I have to basically determine how this thing is going to be set up, how it's going to be constrained to move, and how it's going to be loaded. So I'm going to fix this surface. And I'm going to apply some forces. Uh, we need to select a coordinate system, as always, and I'm going to do this in terms of directional components. And I'm going to add one more smaller force over here to these smaller surfaces. And it looks like I missed a surface there, so I'm just going to fix that really quick. I meant to apply to this surface as well. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my simulation. Um, this is something that can be toggled on and off. So I'm going to click simulate, and this is going to keep simulating until I click it off. Um, We'll see that it takes just a couple seconds to think, and very, very quickly we're going to converge on a solution. Um, so I'll change this to megapascals to get more realistic units. We can see this is still refining itself a little bit, but we're pretty much done. Um, this is something that took, you know, 10 seconds. That in Creo Simulate might take an hour. I'm just making that number up, but um, that's the sort of scale of how much faster this this program is going to be. So I can enable my max min values. Um, we can see that my max here is showing. And I'm just going to cover a couple of the other options here. Um, I can choose whether I want distinct steps for, for the results or just a continuous kind of shift in, um, in the tone. I can um, I can show deformation. So I'm going to switch this from stress to deformation. This is how much the model is going to deform. We can see the max deformation is over here in the corner. Um, and I'm just going to animate this. Um, this is not to scale. I can make it to scale if I want by showing true deformations here. And when I do that, Aha, maybe it is to scale. Yep, it is actually to scale. Um, usually it's not, but yeah, we can see the model is actually going to move about that much. Um, 11 millimeters, as we can see in the legend over here. So I'm going to switch it back to stress. And we're just going to do von Mises stress. I'm going to use my simulation probe to get a little bit more info here. Simulation probe is going to give us data. Um, I can do the max um, across a reference, for example. So if I click this surface right here, rather than value at point, I'm going to do maximum on that surface. And it'll tell me 427 megapascals. This surface over here is going to be 430, and that's actually our model max. So I'm going to make some design changes. Um, and let's go ahead and I'm just going to delete that probe really quick. Um, and I'm going to make some quick design changes to this part to try and make uh, this specific area a little bit stronger. Um, we can actually leave the simulation toggle on while we make those changes. And as we make the changes, we'll be able to see the results change in real time. 
Um, this is pretty graphics card intensive, so I'm just going to toggle this off while I make a couple changes. Um, but that's just to make my computer have to work a little bit less hard. Um, you could definitely leave this on as you're making these changes as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, first edit the, the dimension of this round and make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to use flexible modeling to make this, this rib here a little bit bigger. And I'm going to move uh, the surface here as well. Now we'll jump back to my simulation. I'll click simulate again. Um, again, I could leave this button checked too, and it would just make the changes or it would calculate the changes as I go. But in my mind, it just takes, you know, 10 seconds anyway. So I like to turn it off, turn it back on. And we'll notice that our model max has actually changed to be over here at this point. Uh, it's still converging on the results, but we can tell from the legend, the model max is about 390, uh, which is a good amount lower than the 430 or so that we were at before. Again, I'll use my simulation probe. I'm gonna show the maximum on various surfaces and we'll see that. The max over here is now about 383 after those, those geometry changes. Um, so hopefully you can see that, you know, after just two minutes of, of um, making some changes, I was able to, you know, fundamentally change the weakest part of the model. And I was able to, um, you know, understand how a major design change would impact my results. Um, again, you know, that's the benefit of this thing. You use it as you're, as you're modeling and you don't have all of those extra steps and all of that extra time of validating your model through traditional simulation tools. I'm going to switch over to a thermal example. Um, Thermal analysis works very similarly. It works simil similarly to structural. You still are going to have um, boundary conditions, which act like constraints, at least how that's, this is how I think of it in my head. And heat loads are gonna be very similar to force loads. Um, so just as before, we need to set our, our boundary conditions. Um, in this case, we have a convection condition, and this is a, um, a whole lot of noise we can see here, but I'm just going to edit definition so we can get a better idea. We'll notice that most of these exterior surfaces are going to be um, have the condition applied. We're skipping over some of these small surfaces because um, they're not going to be too significant, but um, mostly the external surfaces are going to be um, exposed to this convection condition. Um, this is just modeling air, um, essentially cooling this thing off. Um, you can see our ambient temperature is going to be set here. So just the temperature of the air and our convection coefficients is typically dependent on things like how fast the air is moving. If there's a breeze, um, you can find, you know, an accurate convection condition for your scenario, um, just by kind of getting a range of, you know, the, the breeziest conditions or a still room and, you know, maybe modeling both of those to get an idea, but, um, that's what convection condition or sorry, convection coefficient is, is doing. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply a load. So I'm going to do a heat flow into this top surface. It's going to be a thousand watts. And I'm going to simulate. So this one took a little bit longer, maybe 10 or so seconds. Um, but you know, you can see still really, really fast. 
Um, same kind of things apply. Um, instead of stress and deformation, the uh, typical measures I'm going to look at are temperature and heat flux. So once again, I'll enable my min and max. I can see the max value on any given surface. We can see that it's about 152 degrees Celsius, which is equal to about 306 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, additionally, I didn't cover this yet, but we do have a simulation report. This is going to give us a printable, exportable um, report. It's just going to give us the materials that we're using, the conditions we created, so convection condition applied to these surfaces, the ambient conditions, so the convection coefficient, and the ambient temperature, the heat flow, and finally results. So we have maximum and minimum temperature. We have the exact coordinates of those results and the values. And we have heat flux as well. Once again, maximum, minimum. Uh, finally, I want to show a, a flow example. Um, fluid flow was added in Creo 7, but only transient. It took them a little bit longer to get steady state fluid flow, um, but that is now included as well. Um, I believe Creo 10 is when that was added. So uh, first I'm going to show a transient example. Um, I already set up the initial conditions, but um, we have to create a fluid domain. So that's just going to be air in this area around my, my jet fighter. We have some boundary conditions and let me just enable simulation display so we can see those. And we have an initial temperature as well for the plane. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Once again, it, it takes about 10 seconds. And this is a transient analysis. We can see that time is going forward and the results are changing a little bit as, as that happens. Um, but I want to show some of the results options that we have. So first is going to be vectors. Um, this is a new option that we have available in uh, Creo 10, you can see that as time goes on, because this is transient, our velocity vectors are going are to change slightly. This is going really slow. We're at about 0.4 or 0 0.04 seconds. But, um, but we can see there's movement here. This is a transient analysis. It's changing with time. Um, additionally, we can do particles. We can uh, reduce the, the quantity or size of these as well. Reduce step size so, so it flows a little bit more smoothly. Uh, we can do streamlines. And again, we can see that those are, uh, you know, constantly changing this transient analysis. And of course, we still have access to a simulation probe. And get the velocity at a certain point. Um, and not just velocity, so we have static pressure, total pressure. So um, for the person asking about um, pressure results, yes, definitely. This is an external flow example, but we can just as easily do internal flow um, through components as well. And um, I'm just going to show a very similar example now, but this is going to be steady state rather than transient. So this is gonna converge on a, on a specific solution. And I'll go ahead and just enable vectors here. And uh, it's still thinking, so I'll give, a, give it a bit. And now we can see our results are converging. We can see at each point in space, um, velocity vector for how the air is moving. Very cool. Um, you'll notice that I've enabled the cut plane here. Um, cross sections can do something similar as well for your model. 
Um, if you want to enable a different cut plane, you can definitely do that um, with cross sections if you would like. So I'm going to um, go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, let me just jump back to my slideshow here really quick. There we go. Um, we'll notice that my email is up here. Um, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, I am happy to help with any questions you have about simulation. Um, whether it's an issue of something's not working or how can I do something in Creo, um, happy to you know talk through that. I also have the uh, sales email up here as well. If you're interested in purch purchasing this software or any training um, for this or any other uh, Creo tool that you have. Um, specifically, we have a, a simulate class. We have an advanced simulate class um, for, for Creo Simulate. We have Creo Simulate Live classes. Um, so reach out if you're interested in that. And of course, we can be found on YouTube as well. Um, a video link to this webinar is going to be sent out within 24 hours. So you will be able to revisit this if you would like. Now I'm gonna open it up to questions. I know I've already hit a lot of these. Um, so I will, um, I'll get to the new ones and give you all a few minutes to uh, get your questions in as well. So first question, can you still encounter singularities? Um, oh, I'm sorry, somebody just knocked something over behind me. Um, so the question, can you still encounter singularities? And the answer is, um, is not really. Um, so I'm just gonna, I don't know the, you know, the techn technological reason here or how this, how this actually works. Um, but I just am gonna show something. Um, you know, the answer is, to, the answer to why this is, this is, you know, in theory better is probably due to the, the core technology, the meshless, um, you know, the meshless technology that, that they use. Um, not let me select edge here. Let's see, maybe this isn't the best example. Let's do a, um, let's change my force. I should be able to change that to the edge. Huh. Now maybe I've never tried this in Simulate Live, but that is surprising to me. Um, I guess it is not letting me do edge uh, edge forces or constraints, which would solve the uh, the um, singularity issue for obvious reasons that you're no longer constraining a you know a two D entity or or, or one D entity. You're constraining a 2D entity. Um, so maybe that's why I haven't encountered any singularities. Um, that's really funny. I, um, yeah, so that's actually not the answer I thought. I, um, I thought that you, we didn't have this issue just because of the way the meshing works behind the scenes. But it turns out that we don't have that issue because Creo Simulate Live doesn't let you create those types of constraints. Um, so in that case, you would have to um, likely do a divide surface and do the um, the typical workaround for applying constraints to edges um, in Simulate, which would be apply it to a, a very small 2D surface um, that you create as a section of the surfaces in both directions. So, so basically, you're just applying a constraint to a small surface rather than an edge. Um, but no, you're not going to encounter the singularities because Creo is not going to let you set up your model um, in a way that that um, that would give you singularities. Um, but no, I haven't encountered any singularities or any weird results around um, around edges and you know things of that nature in CSL. Um, so it shouldn't be something you have to you know you have to worry about.
Uh, question, can you export video clips of the defamation to use in PowerPoints and stuff? Um, I do not know that you can do that in Simulate. So, um, so I do not think that there is, there's no way that I know of that we can export as a video, like an MP4 or something like that. Um, I think the best way to do, to, to do that, um, let me just make sure there's not something in like somewhere random, like, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, there's, there's, um, there's not a way to do that. You'd have to just do a screen record or something like that. You can export results. You can export images 2D. Um, I don't think you can export videos. Is there a setting that enables more accurate results and takes slightly longer to run? Uh, yes. Yes, there is. So I believe that I have it turned all the way up on accuracy right now. Yep. So we just have a slider. Um, this is what we have. Um, I don't know the, you know, the specifics because as I said, I don't really understand how this meshing actually works. So I don't know that it's going to be twice as accurate or half as accurate or, you know, I honestly have no idea, but we do have access to this slider. Um, all of my models here are simple. So you can see I dragged accuracy all the way over and, um, Huh, actually, I've never again, I've never actually hovered over to this, but it actually does give you, I guess, um, minimum element size here as you drag this, if you hover. Um, interesting. So yeah, um, you do have this dragger available. You, you probably noticed this is a very simple model. My simulations generally took under 10 seconds, even on the, you know, the highest accuracy setting. Uh, question, can you apply welds like in Creo Simulate to close gaps in the model? Um, unfortunately, no. So idealizations are something that are not yet built in here. So if I go to Application Simulate, we have several different idealizations that are very useful. So we can create an idealized version of a beam, a spring, a mass, shell, or a crack. We can do weld features. Um, welds, I guess, are slightly different than idealizations. They're gonna control you know, how geometry is able to move. They're gonna bond geometry in certain areas. Um, and then rigid links and weighted links work, again, you know, in a, um, basically by idealizing a, a relationship. These are all not yet in CSL. Um, so the answer is unfortunately no. Um, they are adding a whole lot to CSL every year. Um, you know, structural thermal is new. Um, contact is pretty new, but um, yeah, unfortunately we cannot do welds yet. Or drop for moving fluid. Um, yes, so definitely, yeah. You can, in terms of initial conditions in fluid flow, um, the ones I set up are not, you know, necessarily your only options. You are gonna need, here, let me just switch over to the right to the right file. You are gonna need some initial conditions, but our options here, we can set a flow velocity at the input, or we can do it inlet pressure, or we can do a mass flow. So, you know, you don't need all three of those, you need one of those. If you have a, a pressure, you know, that is, you, you could basically say, I know the pressure at this point, so then let me record the velocity or let me record the mass flow. Um, so yeah, as long as you, have an initial condition, you're able to then see how that changes throughout the simulation, if that makes sense. You, you know, you need some initial condition and incoming pressure and incoming velocity and incoming mass flow. But once you have that initial condition, you can then record the rest of that data um, or generate results for the, for the rest of those values. Um, let's see, I'm just making sure I got all the, all the questions here. Um, how do contacts work? I think I covered that um, at least briefly. This is only really relevant in assemblies and I don't, I, I have this engine here, um, which I guess kind of works. So this engine is made up of several different parts. 
Um, these parts are assembled together in Creo, so they're touching, like with co coincident constraints. Um, where that happens, so where these, if I, I have to go structural here because that's where, where contacts are gonna you know, be involved. But basically where those things are touching, the um, behavior by default is gonna be bonded. So those things cannot move. Um, we also have the option for no separation, which is going to allow basically pulling forces between the two. They just, they just can't separate. Um, and then we have free, which basically means things can move freely um, away from each other. Um, or actually through each other as well, but you're not going to use it in that situation. Um, it's more so used if, if you know two things aren't going to interact, you can just create, you know, a free association there. Um, the the uh, improvement or one of the improvements is detect contacts. So we can detect where parts are contacting um, within a certain range. So if two things are within, you know, this close to each other, um, we're able to set a behavior for all of those surfaces that, that it detects. Um, so these relationships, as I said, it can be bonded, free, or no separation. Um, we don't yet have the ability to have um, you know, physical contact analysis. That's a nonlinear operation, incorporates friction. Um, can't do that, but we can set um, behavior you know, between two parts, and that is how that works. Um, I think this is the last one. We got a question, how do we animate deformation in von Mises? So von Mises would be something that, so let me just go back to the structural here. Um, so what von Mises stress is showing us is basically the, the stress inside of the material. So if you imagine a skyscraper, it has these big steel beams, these big steel support beams. Um, and those can be loaded with a whole lot of force. Those can be supporting an entire building, but they might not necessarily move whatsoever. Um, so what von Mises is showing us, it's a internal stress of the material. So essentially how stressed this material is, um, but it's not necessarily going to be showing, you know, how, how much this thing moves. Um, this is, a, you know, of course this thing as it fails. So when stress gets really, really high, this thing is going to have, you know, deformation, which we're able to show with deformation. And you do have some like permanent deformation if you actually get close to the, the yield stress of the material. Um, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that von Mises stress is just showing the, the internal stress in the material, not how much it's moving. So there's not really a way to animate that. It's just going to be a constant value, you know, inside the material. Um, so when we're animating deformation, so how this thing moves, that's really the only th relevant thing that we would animate. Um, you know, I can I can put this on von Mises stress, and then I can still animate deformation. So this thing is going to move, and it switches this to deformation again. Um, but yeah, stress is not necessarily showing how much this thing moves. It's just showing how much stress the material is under at that point. Um, and I guess just to add on to that, so, you know, I can look at this in MPA and depending on your material, um, so this is something I didn't exactly touch on, but you must apply a material to your model. So you can see this one is aluminum, uh, 6061. And depending on the material you use, you're going to have values of stress that, that, you know, are going to cause permanent damage. So, you know, for aluminum, I don't know off the top of my head but I would guess that this is actually above the yield stress. So I would guess that this part would fail. Um, just be as 390, that's like, you know, high. Um, it's about where steel fails, if my memory is correct. Um, so yeah, the, the, the stress results are more so gonna be looking at this value and saying, is my material gonna be able to hold up to that or not? And you're generally gonna have a pretty big safety margin there because, you know, there are other factors you can't control, like the quality of the material Every single material is going to have small, tiny imperfections that, you know, you can't really model that very well. So 
that's something that, you know, you just control by getting the best materials you can and building in a big safety margin so that, you know, big margin of error so that your part's stronger than it needs to be. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of reference or background in terms of what von Mises compared to, you know, the deformation is, is showing. This is what, how much the part actually moves. And this is the part, areas of the part that are under the most stress and are most likely to fail. I have a question here, and it's a very interesting question. Is there any method for simulating the rise in temperature during conditions like machining? For example, simulating the expected temperature rise of a given material like aluminum while being drilled by a given material like carbide? Or is this science fiction? Um, so that is going to be, the answer to that is going to be, you cannot do that in CSL. Um, you cannot even really do that in Creo Simulate, but I want to say you could probably do that in ANSYS. Um, that sort of thing where you, you know, there's, there's a lot going on there. There's contacts, there's heat. So there's, you know, there's at the very least there's structural and, um, and thermal there. And of course, that's going to be a very non-linear um, operation, you know, making structural changes. Then, of course, you have the, the the changes to geometry. I don't remember exactly what that's called in simulation language, but anytime your model is changing over time as well, which yours would be, that makes it more complicated. So, in my mind, there you probably can't do that in Creo. Um, you know, in any of the simulation tools in Creo that I can think of. Um, you could probably do that in ANSYS. It would be a you know a big learning curve because ANSYS is um, ANSYS is the industry leader in simulation, and it's you know it's hard to learn because there's so much functionality there. It's also very expensive. You know, Creo simulation tools are are really cheap compared to full fledged ANSYS. Um, but yeah, that would be a really hard problem. You could probably do it in ANSYS, but it wouldn't be wouldn't be easy or cheap. Um, is there an indicator of processing progress? Um, there is, so there is, uh, there's this, the, the, um, sorry, the, uh, the progress bar, not a progress bar, but the status bar down here will give you at least an indication that the simulation is complete. Um, but no, as far as I know, there's no progress bar. You do have one of those in Creo ANSYS, which is nice. That's one of the things I like about Creo ANSYS. Um, but no, all we have is simulation study is complete, which is, you know, better than nothing. Um, still working or done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just going to tell you this is already this is already done. So, you know, this is this is already run, and there haven't been any changes, so it's not going to give me a new message. But um, here, let's just quickly demonstrate. Yeah, okay. I'm going to quickly just do a fix and just do one load, just so we can you know run this thing. So just looking at my at my message log down here, at some point it'll say simulation study is complete. And there we go. Will there be a demo of Creo ANSYS in the near future, or is there one on YouTube? Um, that is a good question. Um, I'm not positive the plans for future webinars. I imagine we have one for Creo ANSYS sometime soon, but that's something, you know, I don't know specifically. Um, in terms of whether we have one on YouTube, um, again, I would guess probably yes. I know I've done one. I've done one demo or one webinar before on Creo ANSYS. Um, I will see if I can find a link to that and send it over to you, Gina. Um, Yep, looks like there was one. Oh, there is one coming up on September 4th. Awesome. Um, ANSYS Advanced Webinar, September 4th. So um, be sure to join into that. And I'll still look and see, you know, if I can find the one I did previously. And if I can, I'll send it over. 
All right, I think that that is all I have um, in terms of questions for today. Um, thank you everybody for um, really good questions. I am always, um, I'm always, I always tell people reach out to me, you know, over email. I'm happy to answer questions. I'm happy to um, to chat further about this stuff. Um, so feel free to reach out. Um, as I said, I'll send this video link to you all um, within 24 hours. You'll be receiving it not from me, but from from somewhere in your email. And um, I will uh, see you next time. Thanks again. Hope you all have a great rest of the week.